Hi everyone! Welcome to Tiny TV, where I bring the classroom to you. I'm Hannah John, and today I'm going to finish up this two-part series on the PhD thesis defense and talk about what actually happens on Defense Day. Stay tuned! So as I mentioned in the first video, the most important thing that you can do throughout the thesis process, and especially as you lead up into the defense, is to make sure that you communicate properly with your committee. And that's even more important as you get into the actual defense day. So with that in mind, let me get into the kind of nitty gritty details of the thesis defense and what you can do to prepare for it. Now we might see some differences in terms of the overall structure of the thesis defense depending on your university or your program, but in general, based on the communities that I've been in and even my own <laughs> PhD defense, there are five major components of the thesis defense. The first is the welcome, the second is the thesis presentation, the third is the discussion and Q&A, the fourth is deliberation amongst the committee, and lastly you will have kind of conclusion. Now this sounds like a lot for the defense, but in general, the thesis defense in my experience has been anywhere between one hour, one and a half hours, if it's very long, up to two hours. So let me go through each one of these components in more detail. If we start with the welcome, this is normally led by your committee chair. And so the committee chair will open the thesis defense. Thank you everyone for coming here for the defense of this particular PhD candidate. We'll probably introduce each one of the committee members as well. This should be a kind of short introduction and kind of setting the tone for the thesis defense and should take, I think, up to maximum five minutes. And the next major part will be the thesis presentation. And this is conducted by you, the PhD candidate who will be leading this section. I actually encourage them to talk a little bit about the personal motivation for engaging in this research. And because the committee is formed of scholars and researchers, we're also very interested to know why you wanted to talk about this particular question, what made you interested in this particular area, and what sort of interesting insights or expertise or other type of practical experience you might bring to the picture. So when it comes to the entirety of the thesis defense, I mentioned before it should be roughly between one hour, one and a half hours, depending on your committee. And so if the welcome is five minutes, how long should the thesis presentation be? And normally my guide is to say something between 15 and 20 minutes. You might think this is kind of short, <laughs> considering you've written a book essentially about your findings for this particular subject. But of course, we are working with the assumption that your committee is already fairly well versed when it comes to your thesis and doesn't need a lot of explanation for each one of the points that you are going to cover. If you cannot fit all of the data into the presentation, I would put that as an appendix and so later you can allude to specific slides pages so that the committee members can turn to those later on. The other reason I give the kind of 15 to 20 minute guideline for the thesis presentation is the highlight of the thesis defense is the actual defense of the thesis itself. And so this takes place in the third component, which is the discussion and Q&A among the committee members as well as yourself. Now what I find is actually students spend a lot of time preparing for the thesis presentation and not a lot of time preparing for the Q&A or the discussion that's about to happen. Part of this might be you're not quite sure what your committee members might ask, so you don't have an idea of what to anticipate with regards to questions. So one tip that I would give you as a PhD student who is writing your thesis and preparing for the thesis defense is again to communicate with your committee members. Oftentimes your committee members might actually tell you specific questions that he or she might ask. So for example, some areas that might need clarification or maybe some different interpretations of the data. And so these are some things that you can do proactively to prepare for your defense. So based on my experience on the discussion and the Q&A section, most of the question, I would say upwards of 70, 80% of the questions that I have heard might have to do with your data, methodologies, and the assumptions that underlie the research itself. And so you might want to prepare yourself in that respect and to make sure that you have a good response for your committee members. One side note here is to make sure that you have a writing utensil and paper to make sure that you can jot down all the questions that are asked by the committee members. Now, just as a last side note for this session, the Q&A or the discussion section is actually the most exciting perhaps, and the most important for the committee members themselves. There's a reason that they've been chosen to be part of this committee, and they want to make sure that they're actually contributing to your research. And so that's why they're going to be asking you sharp questions so that you can have an even stronger set of findings that you can be proud of. 
Now, in my experience, this discussion and Q&A section might take something upwards of 30 minutes or perhaps even more, depending on how much there is that they want to discuss with regards to your research. Okay, so after this welcome, after you have presented on your thesis findings, and after you have fielded questions from your committee members about your research, we will ask you to leave, <laughs> either physically offline or virtually online. And this is when the committee members will come together and deliberate about whether they should pass your research. And when it comes to the thesis defense results, there are normally one of three possibilities. One is they will pass without revisions. Second is they will pass, but this is conditional upon you making revisions to the thesis. And the third would be to not pass or fail the thesis defense. In my experience, it has been very, very rare for students to fail the dissertation defense. Part of the reason is, if you have been in good contact and communication with your thesis advisor, as well as your committee, they probably would not have let you proceed to the thesis defense unless they were confident that you were ready to do so. At the same time, your committee might find that there are huge gaps either in the logic of the defense or in terms of data methodology or how you link that with the key findings. Or maybe there are some limitations to your research that are just insurmountable and cast a really big cloud over your research. In this case, what I have heard from other committees is that they do not pass the initial thesis defense, but they are willing to reschedule a thesis defense in the very short term. And so you'll be able to have the chance to redefend your thesis. Again, in my experience, this is very rare, and so hopefully that'll give you some encouragement. It doesn't, does it? <laughs> I hope it does. So during the deliberation, there's normally a consensus among the committee members whether to pass or not. And if we do pass, in general, we do tend to ask for revisions because again, no research is perfect. And this is a great chance for us to try to introduce some of those limitations and how you might be able to address those before you finalize the thesis itself. So then we'll call you back into the room, whether it's virtual <laughs> or physical, and this will be the ending of the thesis defense. And the committee chair would normally say, based on the deliberations of the committee, this is what we have decided. And normally we do say, congratulations, doctor. And this is a kind of a euphoric high <laughs> that you'll experience. And then of course you're trying to manage your expressions. But Hopefully this is a joyous celebration of the research that you have conducted and that this is just a kind of crowning ceremony. So what happens after the defense? If your committee has said congratulations and you have passed the defense, but we would still like some revisions for you to undertake, then these revisions would normally be undertaken within the next few weeks after the thesis defense. So please work closely with your thesis advisor and get the final okay on the revisions before you get the sign off from your committee. And so you also have to take care of other administrative duties, such as getting the final file to the library, also printing your final thesis and getting the signatures from your committee members. I would also mention here as a side note, I encourage my students right after the thesis defense for the next day or perhaps a couple of days to just relax and to take care of their health. Please don't undertake any major revisions soon or immediately after the thesis defense because you've actually been very nervous for the past few weeks, past few months leading up to this point. And oftentimes you can actually get quite sick after your body releases all of that tension. And so I actually tell my students to relax for a few days and once you're in the right frame of mind, then you can start undertaking those revisions and finish up the thesis. So I hope you're feeling more confident and prepared for your PhD thesis defense, but I'm sure that you might still have some questions about the thesis defense process. So what I'm going to do in an upcoming video, perhaps in the next couple of months, is I'm going to have a special Q&A video with one of my favorite professors at this department, and we will be answering your questions about the PhD thesis defense. So if you have questions, please leave a comment below, or send me a DM on Instagram, and yes, we'll be very happy to answer your questions so generous, right? <laughs> Best wishes to you, Hi Ting, and until next time here on Tari TV, bye!